So on this 15th anniversary of the first module going up, um, why do you think that people should be invested in the space station? Why is it important to, to follow? Why is the space station important? Oh my goodness. Uh, the space station is just a phenomenal uh, international cooperative engineering scientific achievement. It's, uh, you know, it's our gateway to the universe. We're using the space station as an engineering testbed for the future. We're doing great science on it. It's a superb international model of uh, how we will work together when we explore beyond planet Earth. Uh, we have so much more to learn about uh, a sustained period of life in a microgravity environment in the space station. You know, that's where we're getting it done. Uh, when you consider we've got, you know, the United States, Russia, Canada, Japan, the European Space Agency and all its partners, and we're all working together as one up there. And, uh, you know, we've had a crew up there since October of 2000, continuously uh, manned the whole time, uh, doing great things. And I think one of the real benefits, I mean, there are multiple benefits, but, you know, the science is going to come more and more as we have more time and uh, we develop things as we move along. But from an engineering point of view, to prove the systems that we need, to prove how the human system can sustain life in a microgravity environment, uh, space station is fantastic. And then, again, the international cooperative effort, how we work together as one. You know, when you consider all those modules were built all over the world, and they came together for the first time in space and everything worked. That is a, a huge engineering achievement also. So now the, the, space, stand, the space station uh, is worth every penny that was spent on it. <laughs> um, that's great. And, and you were up for the, f the first assembly mission. Um, so I'm wondering if you could talk a little bit about that. What was it like floating through those modules for the first time? Oh, absolutely. You know, first off, it's hard to believe it's been 15 years. It seems like it was yesterday. Uh, on November 20th, when the FGB launched on a proton rocket from Baikonur, I had the crew over to my house and uh, we had dinner and uh, had a little party and watched it. And uh, we all knew when Zarya got safely on orbit, that was great for us because we were going to have a mission a couple of weeks later. Then on December 4th, we launched uh, on Endeavour with Unity in the payload bay. And, you know, the mission was perfect from start to finish. It was just, it was so neat to you know, take Unity out, dock it to the, uh, berth it, uh, pick it up with the arm and berth it to the uh, docking station, then rendezvous with Zarya, grab it with the arm and attach it to the uh, other end of Unity. Uh, we had three spacewalks to connect all the data and electrical connectors, and uh, we got to go inside the space station for the first time. And uh, beforehand, the media kept asking, who's going to be the first one inside? And I, I never told anybody. In fact, I never even told the crew. And uh, when it came time to uh, go in, I, I waved my arm and I pulled Sergei Krikalov up with me and we went through every hatch side by side uh, into Unity, into uh, Zarya uh, together because it was an international space station and I, I thought it was really important that we enter as an international team. So it, that the days, the two days that we were inside, uh, you know, getting it ready for the first crew, uh, that was really special. And activating the systems. Uh, we did so much testing on the ground of the computer systems and stuff and uh, we did mission essential integration tests at the Cape, and that was something they hadn't planned on doing. Originally, it was a ship and shoot philosophy, and uh, we convinced them that we needed to do more testing at the Cape, and we found another, a number of uh, issues. And I tell you, nobody was more surprised than me when we sent the commands from the aft flight deck on the computers and everything powered up and worked perfectly. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's pretty amazing. Um, and what role do you think international collaboration should pay with man uh, should play with manned spaceflight in in today and in the future? Oh, I think it's uh, it's critical. Uh, first off, it's it's way too expensive for any one nation to go off and explore beyond planet Earth. And when we do explore beyond planet Earth, and we are going to, uh, we're building a rocket and a spacecraft to do that right now. Uh, when we do explore beyond planet Earth, uh, we should do it in an international cooperative effort. And I, I believe the space station has set the model for that, the agreements that we have in place, how we work together, and uh, we'll continue to work together as we explore. Uh, down at the Cape right now, uh, we're preparing the launch complex for the space launch system and the Orion spacecraft. We have Orion, uh, the very first uh, flight article, being built uh, right now for a flight next September, less than a year away, on a, a flight over 3,000 miles from Earth to re-enter at near lunar re-entry velocities to check out the thermal protection system and other uh, systems on the spacecraft. So we're making huge progress towards that space launch system launch at the Cape in 2017 and eventually having a crew on board so that 
we can explore because the ultimate goal is to, to get to Mars. Uh, as we do the asteroid retrieval mission, as we send these precursor missions, Monday we launched uh, um, MAVEN to Mars to study the Martian atmosphere. Uh, just as the rovers are on Mars, MAVEN, all these uh, flights are integrated so that in the end uh, we know all that we need to know to send humans. Um, and did you ever think that the, the space station would, would sort of be this amazing complex that it is today, or was this always what, what um, you and your fellow astronauts sort of thought it would, it would be sure. like? Well, I, I think we knew what we were. We had a great plan, uh, just as we do now, and we knew that we could implement it and make it happen. Uh, one of the concerns at the beginning was, we, we called it the wall of EVA, all these spacewalks that we had to do uh, in order to complete the space station. And uh, many thought that, uh, you know, we wouldn't be successful. And uh, looking back on it, it's truly amazing. When you look at the number of spacewalks we did without problem, and the mechanical problems, the problems that we had, I mean, I'm talking about the suits and everything working fine for the crew. The mechanical problems that we ran into with the space station, because we had humans there, because we had a, a team that could react and think real time, we were able to overcome all the issues that we had building the space station. And, and just a, a phenomenal achievement when you consider all the spacewalks and all that went together. Uh, I was reviewing our crew, post flight crew video uh, the other day, brought back great memories. But at the end of the video, you know, I mean, we leave with this picture of. Unity and Zarya uh, together in space, you know, the birth of the International Space Station. And then we went to an animated uh, video that showed all the modules coming together until it was this huge complex the size of a football field. And, you know, it was all computer animation. And I look at it now, and it's not computer animation anymore. It's there. It's real. It, we actually did it. And I think that's uh, absolutely phenomenal. Wow. Um, yeah, and sort of along the same lines, if, would you mind talking a little bit about the benefits of actually sending humans um, farther into space as opposed to continuing to use rovers and, and probes? Well, it, absolutely, we need to use rovers and probes. But in the end, you know, it, you need boots on the ground. You know, you talk to the scientists, to the geologists, how much they would like to have, <clears throat> you know, a real person, an astronaut on the ground, instead of sending commands to a rover moving a few uh, feet a day uh, exploring. Uh, humans are just much more adaptable. Uh, it, it's, you know, in the end, I mean, it's in our DNA to explore, uh, to go beyond the known, to learn more. And, you know, we are going to continue to do that as a people. It, it's, it's right. And boots on Mars, that's the goal. Oh. Well, you know, I, I was blessed to have four fantastic missions. Each one was unique and each one was special. But I, I got to lean a little bit on the last one uh, to have, uh, you know, laid the cornerstone for the International Space Station to have all that went on on that flight with spacewalks and rendezvous and I everything else. Uh, it, was, it was really special. But I think the, the most special thing about being in space is, is just looking down on the Earth from 200 miles high. It, it truly is a beautiful blue jewel of a planet with this thin little hazy line that you see that's our atmosphere protecting it from that harsh void of space, that ultraviolet radiation, those extreme temperatures. And when you see the, the Earth, and we didn't obviously have the, the blue marble that the Apollo astronauts saw, but it's still pretty special. And it, you see that beautiful blue planet with that harsh black void of space. And space is just the, it's the darkest, blackest void you can possibly imagine. And, there's a pretty special place, and yeah, we need to take care of it. But I, I could look out the window all day. I, I envy the crews on the International Space Station now with that beautiful cupola to be able to get up inside there and look out. That's pretty amazing. But now that they were all special, uh, it's a special place. Uh, I have to add, um, you know, we're very, very blessed. Those of us who are astronauts have had the opportunity to fly in space, but we're such a small part of the team. I haven't flown in space for 15 years. But every day I come to work with a smile on my face to be part of this team, to be making a difference. And uh, NASA is truly an amazing place to work. We have the most talented, dedicated contractor, civil service workforce anywhere. And uh, we are doing great things and we're going to continue to do great things. That's great. Thank you so much for chatting with me. You bet, Miriam. Space.com.